Mayong Adla, Komista. This is Ben from Philippines Extremes coming to you live outside of Cebu City in Lapu Lapu from Miyako's Tacos. And today I'm going to be interviewing um, a, a American and Filipino couple who um, have a lot of interesting things to say. So, how about you guys introduce yourselves? Okay, I'm Carlos uh, from Maryland in the United States, uh, area called Columbia, Maryland. So, I've been here since what, the night, the, the 14th of July, that's like when I actually got here. So it's been maybe, what, two weeks now? And uh, I've been hanging with this girl since. I'm Lynn and from Mindanao, originally from Lopez. Nice. And you said you've been here since July 14th. July 14th. July 14th. And, um, I assume that you came here because of um, your Lynn, your significant other here, Lynn. Right. So you guys started talking online, or how did that unfold? Where, where did you meet? Yeah, so we met there. Immediately hopped off the website and went to uh, WhatsApp. So we started communicating with WhatsApp via video chatting, and uh, we did that for about a month. And a half, maybe, about a month and a half. And then I decided to come here to visit. Uh, that was back in March. Back in March. Okay, so you just talked for about a month and a half, huh? Yeah, so a month and a half. Yeah, so I talked to her. We started talking in the beginning of February. So by mid March, I was actually landing here in Cebu. And she, I got her ticket to come over from Mindanao to Cebu. We met here. So we spent a whole month together. Getting to know each other on a you know physical basis, personal basis, right? It's supposed to just over the internet. So after that, I decided that the relationship was good. It was we had we understood each other. We kind of clicked pretty good. Uh, not that we have a lot in common, but I, I understand the difference in age, and I understand what her interests are. Like you know, younger. People that want to be on, on the phone, and want to be on TikTok or whatever, and that's fine. Because when she does that, I do my own things. I like watching the news, I like watching YouTubes. So I pursue my own interests so we can, in a healthy way, right, separate and do our own thing without me being, uh, what you call it, scornful about, you know, or being feeling ignored by her. So that's, so that, that worked out. So, I was getting close to my my career, the, the end of my career, because I worked with the U.S. courts in, uh, in Maryland, and I was on the fence about when to retire, even though I was fully eligible. So, she was uh, a big factor in me making the decision to pull the trigger, and I uh, feel good about it, so I did. So you were here um, briefly before, and then you went back and you okay. kind of set, settled things and made the decision to officially retire, right. and then you came back. Right. Okay. Yeah. And um, so you, are you staying here permanently now in the Philippines, you think? Well, came here with the idea to stay for at least a year. Okay. That might include, though, a visit back to the States, you know. Uh, because I have children there. I have four kids. Oh, right, yeah. yeah, I have four kids. Four kids? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> four kids. They're grown. They're grown kids. Right. But, you know, I have three grandkids. Oh, so that's uh, awesome. I need to go back and, you know, just not be going for all year. So I want to go back maybe for, I'm thinking about three weeks, visit, you know, with them, do whatever celebration we need to do, birthdays or, sure. you know, uh, Maybe go Thanksgiving, maybe go Christmas, some, some, or maybe in spring break, I could go back and uh, come back here and uh, continue my stay. I see. So, so um, you would go back by yourself, or do you have plans um, on bringing Lynn over there with you? No, not at this time, no. But the plans uh, to take Lynn over there would take, from what I understand, it would take a, a lot to get any kind of a visa. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, it's very, the process is very involved. 
so it'd be easier for me to go. She's, I think she's okay going back to Mindanao to Orqueta and staying with her family for a few weeks, right? She wouldn't mind that at all, so that would be fine. Yeah. Uh, they talk on the phone several times a day, so. Very involved with your family. Yeah. Do you miss your family? Are you a little bit homesick? Not homesick? Okay, well that's good. I know that can be a factor for a, a lot of people sometimes. Yeah, the visa process is very extensive. Uh, it can take upwards of a year or longer, depending on what you're applying for. It's yeah. possible you can do it, but it's definitely... It, it'll uh, take time. It's a lengthy it's process. process. It takes, I think, between six and eight months. Yeah, and definitely. That's the faster track that you can do it, you know. It's, anyway, I was looking at it, it sounds like a nightmare to do that. It, a lot easier for you know me to come here and just stay together that way. Right. So um, you currently live in Cordova. Cordova. Cordova Cebu. Right here. Yeah. And, and um, you know I'm a big fan of Cordova Cebu myself because I live here and I and I have my preferences and dislikes. But uh, how do you like um, living in Cordova so far? So first place. Actually, this was the first place we looked at because I was I was trying to find places from the states. I got into this website called Dot Properties, but it turned out to be not that great. So then, when on the marketplace, and she found a few places that looked nice. So she showed me this one. The price was right, and we came to see it. We liked it. It's a cute little place. It's a gated community. Very the guards are very protective. Okay, to get in there. Yeah. And uh, the price was right. Got a price for about what turns out to be about three hundred and sixty dollars a month, which is for the house. It's a single house. It's got a parking pad with a gate. You know, you can put the car in and close the gate. So I like that. And uh, and that's it. So we moved in there. But I want, we've only been there for has it been a week yet? Maybe going on two weeks. So we really don't know the area that well. I did notice one thing. I told you I was looking for a car, right? Right. So sometimes, I, 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 of course, when we're in Cebu, grab is easy. I, I call for a grab, and on the average, in four minutes, the guy's downstairs, right? So we just come downstairs and get in the car. Or right here, uh, the grabs are a little harder to get. Oh, here in Cordova. Uh, here in Cordova, where I am, for whatever the reason is, right? And it could be that we're kind of in the in the southeastern part of Cordova, so we as far as southeast as you can get on Mac Time Island. So uh, if you have grabs that are coming from Cebu, they got to get across one of three bridges to get here. Sure. Yeah. And then, so you can't put them out of the way. Um, so I'm thinking that's a factor. So the other day we were supposed to go look at a car that was actually yesterday and we could not get a grab and we kept trying and trying and I don't know if you know this grab tells you hey you know sometimes the drivers are busy so do you want to try again for three more minutes or do you want to cancel so keep trying for three more minutes and keep trying and you know we're dressed and ready to go and we're spending about I don't know what would you say 15 10 15 minutes trying to get a lock-in on a driver to come get us. So I guess access is a little more limited than it would be, uh, of course, when you're downtown Cebu. That I know it is. Now the neighborhood we're in, we like, is not loud, there's no there's no roosters, no dogs. Well, there's karaoke, but during normal hours, you know, not late at night. So, so far, so good. The power has gone out twice and we always find this out both times when we come back to the house and within 10 minutes the power is back on the water so not a whole lot of suffering there so yeah that's that's a good thing and i'm glad you noted that there was a brownout last night did you guys experience yeah, that? that's yeah that's the one we came in and there was nothing us yeah. too yeah we were on our way home and we stopped at the sorry sorry store mm -hmm. and the lady said brown out you know and we got home and <laughs> literally like 10 or 15 minutes later it came back. Came back. Yes, so, exactly. But it hasn't been really a, much of a factor for us. Usually, we've been out and about when it happened, and we completely missed it. So, and you know, I don't know if you know this, but I was I was sold in the Maggette. 
I was told to move into the Maguete because, you know, I've been watching the videos and everybody said the Maguete, the Maguete, blah, blah, blah. Even there's, there's another guy that has, uh, he's married to uh, a Thailand, a Thailand, Thailand model. Uh, and uh, they do a lot of travel. He's been to a lot of countries. And he said the Maguete is like a, a tourist attraction and it's a great place to live, blah, blah, blah. He's the most recent one that I've heard. But she didn't want to go to Maguete. And then I started listening to the complaints about the negative about the Maguete and the power outages and the fact that there's no grab or taxis. Apparently, you have to live on trikes mm -hmm. yep. or scooters. Yeah. So, you know, transportation is an issue. Uh, the, the brownouts are an issue. Very especially frequent. Especially for bloggers yes. that are trying to yeah. edit or load up videos, you know, because we don't do any of that. But, uh, and apparently, the dust is an issue. It's dusty. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah. It's pretty dusty. So, so. That's it. But they said Valencia is nice. I don't know. But she, you know, we started talking about this. We started discussing her and I. And she mentioned, you know, so what kind of hospitals are you going to get? Like, and I said, oh, that's a good point. And I'm not, I don't have any issues right now, but you never know. Right. Getting a scooter, you know, break a leg or something, we're going to be able to get uh, access to medical care pretty quickly. So that got me thinking, and the fact that the, the infrastructure should be better. My internet is 300 MIPS, and I, sometimes I get close to 400, so that's great, no complaints about that. So as long as I have power, the internet is, actually it's what I have back home. I just, you know, I didn't need a gig, I just, I was, I'm running on, I was running on 300 MIPS, and that's what we get here, so that's, that's pretty good. Yeah, the internet's pretty good. Yeah, no, no complaints. Because apparently in some places also that's lagging, you know. Right. What, what kind of internet service do you use? Is it Globe? Globe Fiber. Globe Fiber. Globe Fiber. Oh, shit. We got Fiber. Okay. Nice. Yeah, we're using... Um, Converge. Converge. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's um, not as good as Globe. It gets kind of slow. And if we're running like a laptop and... Uh, other so you did good with getting the globe. Yeah, no, no, this we so of course, of course we got we run the TV on the on internet all the time. I have a hard wire to the router, but yeah, we have three phones in the house and a laptop and uh, TV and uh, no issues, no issues at all, no okay. complaints. What are some of your positive things that you enjoy about the Philippines? Okay. Um, so the last time I was here, mm -hmm. I was strictly on tourist mode. Right. We were on tourist mode. So we did some traveling the last time I was here. That was good. That was great. I like the idea of being able to go not far and end up in an island somewhere with new beaches that I've never seen before and a ton of places to eat and a lot of places to tour. Um, of course, the, the Filipino are happy people, so that's that's good to know. Uh, in the states, you, you tend to be challenged a lot. I don't I don't I don't experience that here. You know, challenged in what way? Well, you get challenged by maybe a clerk at a store. Uh, you get challenged by you walk in a room and there's guys and everybody wants to puff their chest out or whatever, you know. And uh, I, I don't feel any of that here, you know. I don't have to establish a presence. I just go somewhere and I smile at somebody and everything is good. Um, I, I appreciate the fact that I, well, you can, you can feel the sense of respect here. When, you, when I walk into a building, and somebody opens the door for me, morning, sir, whatever, blah, blah. Even when I walk into the gate, uh, the guards go out of the way to say hello, to acknowledge my presence or our presence. And we don't, we don't get that back in the States. Mm -hmm. Oh, not as often anyway. So here, yeah, people are, because you know, they talk about the invisible, the invisible man in the United States, right? You've right. heard about that. Sure. The invisible man syndrome. You turn 50 or older, mm -hmm. you disappear. <laughs> Once you've you. aged out. Yeah. yeah. You, people don't know you exist. And if they, they see you, they, you're not worth acknowledging. But we don't get that here. Right. And that's that's a big positive for me. Yeah, it, it definitely um, is uplifting in a lot of ways. And a lot of that baggage 
from the United States um, just lifts off your shoulders and you start to feel it. It's 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 almost palatable. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, it's, it is perceivable. Yeah, you, can, you can see it. You can feel it. Um, Which is fantastic, right? I mean, it it elevates your um, your mood and your just general sense of your day. You know, you you feel this sense of positivity that. Um, you know, being uh, submerged in the United States with all that negativity, it, it wears on you and, and you don't really notice it. But once you come over to the Philippines, you start to just feel it like like lifting off of you like helium yep. or something, just floating away and slowly, slowly over time. So that's definitely something that a, a lot of people experience when they come to the Philippines is, right. is just the atmosphere is uplifting and, and can... Uh, alleviate some of that baggage that you collect from from living in a negative kind of atmosphere like the United yeah. States. So do you have any like negative um, opinions about the Philippines that you would want to relate to any viewers? Negative about being in the Philippines? Yeah, certain things that um, um, you have to adapt to or you dis... Uh, we have central air that we have window units that I used to like to walk in the house and the whole house is evenly cooled and everything. So now we gotta finagle that a little bit, but there's nothing that you know we cannot work around. And uh, so you've adapted to the weather, or you just rely entirely on your uh, the AC. Weather, the weather I like. I like the heat. I'd rather be hot than being freezing cold. But That's when right. It, when it comes to going to sleep at night, like a little cooler. Yeah. So yeah. So I don't mind. I don't mind. Sitting on a walk and sweating bullets and coming back home and taking a shower, you know, uh, mm -hmm. and enjoy the rest of the day. But uh, so no so real negatives. To no, no. Transportation for me is an issue. I'm trying to get it around that. The traffic is is an issue, and the way uh, the rules of the road or the lack of rules on the road that's another issue. But I think those are all small things. Small things. Yeah. I haven't had any run-ins with anyone. I don't expect to have any run-ins with anyone. Uh, in the stage you have a running at least once a week with somebody because you know yeah. it's the way that is. Yeah. So the Karen syndrome is not as as present here. You understand what I mean by the Karen? The Karen. Oh yeah, we know we know what the Karen syndrome okay. is. Yeah. So that's not as prevalent here. Definitely not. So. So what about the food? Are you liking the food? Have you adapted to that or? Well, all I'm eating so far is pork. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> she cooks so, a lot of pork. Yes, yeah, she does. She does. Um, it's what good. About? It's good. Don't get me wrong. I, let me tell you something. I'm, originally, I'm from Puerto Rico, and lechon in Puerto Rico is a big thing, also. Okay. Yeah. Something that we did, uh, like if you go to uh, the beach, then you gotta get some lechon. You know, if you're gonna go out drinking and, and hanging out with people. Uh, let you home, but on a day to day, you know, not, maybe not all the time, but here is is every day, it's a staple, right? Right. So, uh, I look for more of a variety, and I, I don't get me wrong, I like let you home. I, I was brought up with it, but uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm ready to, you know, what you call it, I'm ready to vary a little bit. I mean, my my broaden uh, your palate a little. Yeah, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> so. What about fish? Do you, you you don't cook fish? Yeah. Yeah, she does. You do? She, she, she makes some fish, yeah. We, we uh, what's the one called? What was it? The Bangus. 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 Oh, yes. Bangus. Isn't that the national fish? <laughs> it is. I don't know. <laughs> I think so. It's, it's pretty pretty uh, popular everywhere you go. The, yeah. the Bangus milk fish. Yeah. yeah. Milk fish I've had, yeah. Yeah, that's the bangles. Yeah. So, yeah, no, we, but the food is, I mean, there's so much variety here. It's crazy. So if, if I get stuck on one, it's my fault. You know, it's, the, the, the options are there. Right. Today we do Mexican. Here we go. Yeah, what did you think about the, the <laughs> yeah. Mexican place? Oh, I like it. I like it. The French fries are fantastic. We don't like tough on them. Um, French fries? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> not necessarily a Mexican dish. I was but... looking forward to a margarita, but apparently it's not something that we do in the Mexican restaurants here. No, no, so, no. They, they don't even have salsa. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, salsa or chips. Yeah, that's, that's, that's different. It's different. Yeah. So. 
So you guys are going um, to Mindanao to visit uh, Lynn's family soon. Mm -hmm. Are you guys going to be flying, or how, how are you going to travel? Yeah, we're going to fly. You're going to fly? We have to fly because she has a, an aversion to uh, the ferries. <laughs> oh, do you get uh, seasick? She doesn't care for the ferry. She they took the ferry coming here to Cebu one time, and it was not a good experience for her. She made you queasy. Made you kind of pukey. Huh? Shaky. Shaky. Yeah. So, so we're flying over. It's an hour flight. We're flying to Osamis, and from Osamis to her hometown, Oroqueta, it's about an hour drive. So we got a hotel because we're not staying with her family. <laughs> not doing that, sorry, no offense. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and that's your first, that'll be your first time in Mindanao, right? My first time in Mindanao, but not my first time meeting everybody. Oh, um, you met them before they come here? Or? They came here, they came here. So, oh. the last time when I, we were here in March, it was her birthday, and I don't know if she, your wife is the same way. Her birthday is like a it's gotta be like big deal. You gotta go, oh, you gotta, you gotta go all out, man. So I flew them here, all seven of them. <laughs> so, and uh, and then uh, an aunt and a cousin joined us also, and we ate at a restaurant. So we all sat down and ate about nine people. And uh, about a week before that, I was celebrating one of my kids' birthday or something, and we went out to eat. It was about seven of us, of course, in the states. So that meal was about three hundred and fifty dollars. So here I'm feeding nine people. I'm thinking this is going to be a bunk. Everybody ate. Everybody drank. Ninety-five dollars. I'm walking out the door. Nice. All in. <laughs> all in. Isn't that great? I'm thinking, man, we could do this. Got a chill. You could, you could, you could, I could go out with a second person in the states and spend that kind of. Oh yeah. Easy. You can do easy. it on one person even. True. You know. But no. And it was a supposedly a nice restaurant in that area. It wasn't, you know, it was a nice restaurant. They're ordering, everybody ordered what they wanted, you know. Uh -huh. So they had a table full of food, a variety of food, but it was, it was great. Yeah, the prices are so, right. So I met everybody then, and we spent about two or three days to get them, put them up in the same building where we're staying, in, a, in an Airbnb, for about three days. And, uh, and then they left, and then we continue our visit. So, but I met everybody in face to face once already. That's good. So, yeah, that's great. So you're familiar with it. So yeah, um, I don't want to get too, um, you know, overstep my bounds or whatever. But do you guys have plans for the future? Um, so, are you just kind of dating, or where are you guys at with that kind of stuff? So, if you listen to all her friends. Apparently we're getting married next week. <laughs> <laughs> of course, because that's what happened. And 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 now her mom also jumped in that in that bandwagon. <laughs> Why? They already got you married and having ten kids, right? Yeah. <laughs> so I had a conversation with her, and I said, before I marry, I need to know you. For we need to know each other well. And I'm talking, you know, between one and two years yeah. of cohabitation to see. You know, because anything can happen. <laughs> Look at what that face is. <laughs> You're looking for a reaction from her. <laughs> so, talking on the phone, talking on WhatsApp, yeah, video chat is one thing, but nothing replaces cohabitation. You know, that's when you get to know somebody. So, so we're doing that now. Yeah. So far, so good. So have far, I, so good. Have I experienced Temple? Yes. <laughs> How many times? Tell me. <laughs> two times only? Yeah. Two times. That's pretty good. That's yeah, not too times. bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but you know, yeah, I, I understand about that. I understand that. I wouldn't call it a tradition, right? It's uh, uh, the way of life. It's the silent treatment, is what we call it, right? Yeah. So, we, we deal with that and we move on. Do I get pissed? Yes, I do. <laughs> but we move on. So, but for the most part, the the thing with her is that we, you know, she's um, of course that the the language barrier is there. Uh -huh. But there's a lot of, and I noticed this with her, 
there's, a, there's an understanding, there's a level of understanding that's not there even with people that speak English with me, you know, uh, like previous relationship. So she could just look at me and, and I, I know what she wants or what she expects. Now she could just give me a signal or not, and I, I know what she's saying. I know what she's, what she means. So I act on that, and I think that's, to me, that I found that to be pretty incredible. I, especially, this was happening the first time I visited, and I noticed that. So I mean, she's smart. She's very smart. She is shy with the, she's shy with their their language, but she's not, you know. Yeah, she's not to be taken lightly. She's she's she knows a lot of things, and she's very quick. So that helps us communicate. Yeah. So no no problems there with the communication, in spite of the language. Um. So what do you think about um your time in Cebu here, being from Mindanao? Do you like it? Is it? Are there big differences or? What's your opinion of living over here on this side? For me, here is uh, different because in my place it's so, so noisy, crowded, the karaoke, neighbors. Like here, not really. Good. Every time you wake up in the morning, you can hear roasters and some cars, motorcycles. And here is different. Different? Do you like it here? Or? Yeah. Yeah, you like it here? But you're excited to go home and, and see your family for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be fun, right? Yeah. And, and, Just to visit. And so are you enjoying um, your relationship with the foreigner? Yeah, I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> Getting along with it? <laughs> what about the differences? Have there been um, differences, big differences that have... Um, um, that you've noticed that you have to adjust to, things you need to kind of uh, get used to or adapt to? Like in, a, in our relationship? Yeah. Sometimes uh, like I feel embarrassed. Embarrassed? Yeah. Why do you feel embarrassed? Because most, some people is like judging you that you're an uh, old guy old, and your age is like younger than your boyfriend. And how do you deal with that when they judge you? Does, does, um, do you, I don't know what situations you've seen that in, but do you confront them? Do you talk to them or do you just ignore them? No, I just ignore them. You just ignore them? How, and so after you walk away, does, how do, does it make you feel? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Well, it, it bothers you a little bit, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that could be definitely something that you're going to have to be dealing with moving forward. Um, but, you know, as you live in a certain neighborhood, people get used to you and they'll get to know you both and, and they'll, they'll uh, adapt to it and, and they'll see that you guys are good people and they won't be a, th a problem after a while. So, this with anything, people need to get familiar, you know. So, that's great. Um, what is your guys' age gap, but since, we're, since you mentioned it? 37. 37. 37 years. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, I can see how that um, would be, you know, a difference in like a generational thing and, and yeah. whatnot. But like you said earlier, you you expect to know and anticipate those differences, and you do your own thing while she does her younger girl type stuff, right? Um, yeah. Well, I did enough research and I watch enough videos and I have my own kids, and I know what the, you know the yeah, like you said, generational thing. Uh, the phone is a, well, the phone is an ever presence, not just this generation, pretty much everybody, anywhere you go to, you see it on a waiting room and everybody has a phone in their face now, right? Right. Or on a line or on a, on a bus or whatever. And that's kind of normal. Uh, yeah, she likes her things. She likes doing her TikToks and whatever and watching that stuff. And, and, and I'm, I'm okay with that. She, she catches up with her friends. And her family and talks on the phone all the time with them, and I'm okay with that. Uh, it's something that I've accepted before even I even met her. I'm uh, uh, thinking, okay, so this is the way it is. Just, if I were to fight that, then maybe we will have issues, but uh, it's not something that bothers me. That's good. Yeah. So you're adaptable to it, which is important. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm fine with that. So a lot of guys 
can't really adjust to those kind of things and creates a little bit of strife and, and dysfunction. I, I have reached out as hey, put the phone here, let me need to talk. <laughs> and I've done that. <laughs> but she, she would listen, she would talk. So that's, you know, that's, that's good. Fun. So while you guys are figuring out, you know, you said you're going to take, you know, one or two years, you know, to kind of make sure you're um, compatible in all the ways. Um, do you think you'll be staying here or are you going to kind of travel around and check out different areas of the Philippines to see where you might settle should things um, uh, work out for a, a future between you two? Yeah, I mean, we, well, so we, I don't know if you know this and I don't know what you guys did, but nowadays... The consensus are right here, and there's a lot of places that I heard about in Mintana that you could do a month to month lease or you could do short term leases. But from every place that I was looking for around the Cebu City area, they were looking for long term leases. Yeah, they want you to sign a long term and they want you to put down a two month in advance and then one month deposit. So that was kind of a so to look for a short term would have kind of limited our choices. So we signed at least for a year. So we're here for a year. Oh, you're here for a year, huh? We're here for okay. a year. Okay. Yeah, well, us too. Yeah. Same scenario. But what I wanted to do is make sure that if I'm going to sign up at least for a year, that we have what we want. And we want a, you know, a, a, a nice place. Uh, we have a house. And uh, again, it's got a fence around it. It's got a gate. To, you know, you park the car inside the gate. And it's in a gated community. And the neighborhood have rules. Uh, actually, they left some of the, the bylaws for the association on the kitchen table, so we're reading about that. So they mm -hmm. have the rules. So yeah, we'll, we'll move to a place that we think we, we're going to be okay. But my issue right now, the main issue or the disappointing issue is the transportation. That's the one that I wasn't prepared for because I'm thinking, okay, we're in Macdon Island. We're near the airport. There's got to be taxis and, and, and grabs all around here, but that's not necessarily the case. So, uh, so, but but I'm gonna resolve that. I, I was gonna get a car anyway. Right. My plan was to get a car or a scooter. Right. Every time we go somewhere. Yesterday we were at the supermarket. It was time to come home. Pouring rain. <laughs> and then we have two bags. I'm thinking, would a scooter work in this case? And the answer to that is no. It wouldn't work. Right. So I'm looking up about getting a small hatch hatchback. You know, like a, what was it? A little uh, Kia Picanto. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So a small little Kia. So we're looking at getting something like that, just enough to you know put groceries in the back, or if you buy a little nice stand somewhere, we throw it in the car, and, you know, sure. bring it home, that kind of thing. And I assume you haven't um, tried to ride around on the public transportation too much, like a jeepney or something, to kind of get. I have not gotten in a jeepney yet. I wanted to get in one, and she said no, but I'm. You got a lot of restrictions yeah. on me. <laughs> Why? Like sprays, like some flag beside me, like rubbery like that. Here in Cebu or in Mindanao? In Cagayan de Oro. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I've heard of those tales too, but um, but you got to at least try to experience it just just to say you did it. Well, we've, we've ridden a bunch of trikes. No, she don't want. She don't want me to do gym. Had had an opportunity. Was it Ilo Ilo? We went to Ilo Ilo. Oh, you did? Because I heard that Ilo Ilo was really nice. Mm -hmm. That's when I was here. We did Ilo Ilo. We did Barakai. Yes, yes. Agumaras Island, which is near Ilo Ilo. We went somewhere else besides. Uh, hmm? yes. Ilo Ilo. Agumaras Island, Barakai. Barakai. Can you go somewhere? No. Yeah. No? Fly back to Oh, okay. Yeah, maybe that was it. So, but no, when we went to Ilo Ilo, it was a direct fly, so that was nice. You know, fly an hour and you're there and uh, get out of the plane and that's it. Mm -hmm. Ilo Ilo was nice, but she didn't like it. How come you didn't like Ilo Ilo? The language, you can understand. Oh, they speak Ilocano, right? Yeah. yeah. Is that what they call it? Uh, a different yeah. language. Yeah. yeah. She, she said, I don't understand what they're saying. And she felt she didn't like that at all, man. Uh, now you know how we exactly. feel. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't like that at all, she said. Because I'm, uh, to me, it was no different. They speak English the same way that I have to communicate here. Yeah, so you had to practice your English while you were there, huh? A little bit. Yeah, she felt out of place. She said, man, I don't, I don't like it here. Like a fish out of water. So she, okay. <laughs> 
Now you got a so, taste of how we feel a little bit. So, you know, Elon was a no go. Uh, I, I heard great things about the vow. Yeah. Uh, even though, you know, it's supposed to be uh, some level of risk down there. Over in Mindanao, yeah, but um, Devao, um, in fact, uh, I have a friend who's also a small vlogger, his name's Randy Bryant, mm -hmm. and um, you can check out his channel if you want, he does a lot of info, and that's all he talks about is uh, Devao, and um, he's been commenting, and he made a comment on the um, meet and greet there, saying, you foreigners need to come to Devao, because it's, it's the... Um, third largest city in the Philippines. Um, it's the st statistically the safest in the Philippines because it's Duterte, one of the it's one of the and it's one of the cleanest it's because one, one former one president one. Duterte, that's where he yeah. was the mayor of before he became president, yeah. and he lives there and he keeps it, you know, runs a tight ship there. Yeah. And so is the one where they also have rules on the road. Right. Oh, then, they don't have anywhere else here. Right. And apparently the roads are nice and wide, like in Iloilo. Mm -hmm. And it's supposed to be nice. But if you are an American, I don't know about the other one, or the other foreigners, but if you're an American and you listen to the State Department, they say we should stay away from it. Right. They said they said not to go to avoid it, to avoid it at all costs, I think is the, the way they were. Yeah, it's to like avoid a red flag. To, to devour. Mm -hmm. Definitely don't go to the Zulu archipelago and don't go to what's that? Marawi. Marawi. Don't Marawi. go to Marawi at all. Yeah. Those are, uh, but they said to avoid the vow if you have, if unless you have to go. Right. That's the the recommendations they have. So you know, maybe that's why there's not a good such a turnout down there. Right. But that's... I've been hearing the same thing you have, and I'd be interested in going to number one to see at least see what it's like, and yeah, maybe. Consider now. She also concerned. She's also concerned about the vows. Are you? How come? You tell him. Tell him. Tell him what you told me. Yeah, come on. Let's hear the insider info. Have you ever been to the vow? You've never been there. You oh, mentioned no. plate tectonics. You know what that is? Uh, earthquakes. Oh, earthquakes. Yeah, is that, that that's kind of an issue there? It is. It is a plate. That is a plate. And and uh, the vow is like right on the on the crack, like like San Andreas fault. Right on the fault. But it's right almost, yeah. Okay. It's, it's over it or, or on it or close to it. And apparently, when there's an earthquake, they feel it hard, harder there than mm. other places. Naturally, the terrorism is kind of um, a valid fear, but not necessarily in the vow. They don't go there. Right, you know? that's, and that's what I understand. That's what I've been hearing. Yeah, so sounds like you guys have, um, you know, been integrating in, uh, into the culture and the, <laughs> and the society pretty good. You know, you got your one term or your one year lease going and you plans to buy a car and you're getting along really well, it seems. And um, so how are you guys both pretty happy with the way things are going here? Are you happy? <laughs> You're happy? That's fantastic. She tells me she misses her family, her brothers and sisters, and everybody else. And I say, well, you want to get your ticket so you can go back? She said, no. <laughs> I said, okay. All right then. <laughs> yeah, you can you can visit and FaceTime and do all those things, you know. And so we're, we're going for the, I'll be my first time in her hometown uh, in a week. You know, yeah, that should be exciting. The 4th, August 4th. That's going to be a short trip, relatively short, you know. A few days, yeah. Yeah. And we'll That'll see. give you time to recharge your batteries and see your family and get some love and all that. And then come back and stay in Cordova. <laughs> she complains to me on the phone that it's so hot and it's so loud. Her mom, had, her mom runs a little store out of the house. So there's traffic through there, you know, and so it's busy. And she has aunts and cousins that live right around her. So they're always coming in and out, and it's, uh, so the noise that's in the house is one thing, then you get the external noise, right? right. The dogs, they, they, they were doing karaoke at 10 o'clock in the morning or whatever, and uh, uh, getting drunk, you know, getting loud, and uh, of course the roosters. So 
She doesn't get any of that here. She gets to sit down and relax. She wants to go to sleep, she goes to sleep. Apparently over there, when she goes to sleep, her mom is calling her every 10 minutes <laughs> for something. <laughs> to come down to eat or do something. So, so yeah. it's not as relaxing. So. so that's cool. So you as a foreigner get to experience kind of the quieter, more peaceful life. And you also get to experience some of the same. So you guys are both probably feeling uplifted in that sense. So. Yeah, we, we relax at the house. We, we are able to relax. That's awesome. And you know, the beauty about her, she's not the, like my youngest daughter. Oh my God, that girl felt like she had to be entertained and somehow it became my responsibility. My youngest daughter, she was, she was living with me for a while. Yeah. And, oh, baby, it's so boring. What am I going to do? None of that here. She is happy spending the day, the next day, and the next day in the house, indoors. She doesn't have to go anywhere. Okay? Right. There's no requirements. There's no demands. No huge tasks or responsibilities there, right, or anything. Right. There's nothing. I'm, I'm the instigator. I'm the one that says, okay, we got to get some bad Pepsi, and we got to get this, we got to get that, so we're going to, you know, we're going to the store. <laughs> Sounds familiar. She said, you go up, come back. I said, no, 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 no. You can dress up. We go. We're going together. This is a family affair. So you do the same thing with her? Oh, yeah. Sometimes I'm like, come on, you got to. So she wants to stay home too? Oh, yeah. yeah. But, you know, she's pregnant. So now she kind of has that as an excuse. But uh... this one before was the same thing. A little This bit. one's not pregnant. But look, she's, she, she likes to. Yeah, if I said, let's go for a walk. <laughs> so no walking or nothing? You don't want to go for a walk. What about your subdivision? Can you walk around in there? Is yeah, we can. It's, yeah. it's small and tidy and, and it's very it's very quaint. It's very, yeah. you know. So, uh, but I'm walking out to the street like this and just see people and just walk, you know. Yeah, and, experience and, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. You haven't like, done much of that? So I found a gym that is about 15 minutes from the house. 15 minute walk. Straight oh, okay. down the street. Uh, I mean, it's, it's hot as hell, and it's, you know, it's just whatever. There's no air conditioning, but, right. but I like it. Uh, so for 60 pesos a day, or 600 pesos a month, I could belong to that gym. And I, I like the idea of walking 15 minutes there and walking 15 minutes back. So I get my walks in that way. Um, so it's great, uh, you know, having the opportunity to speak to you guys, and you guys sharing your life with us. And... Um, I think you guys are, you know, fantastic and you have a great plan going and I wish you guys all the best in your endeavor here, especially in um, being our relative neighbors here in Cordova. That's right. fantastic. Yeah. Each other, yeah. And um, I know that you'll, um, you'll, you'll enjoy Cordova, you know, but of course, eventually you should maybe branch out and see other places, you know, but of course that's your personal preference. But yeah. um, you guys are a lovely couple, and I can't really get you Thank both you. in the in the shot too well. Thank you. And um, we wish you the best, and and we appreciate you know you taking the time and sharing your experiences and things about the Philippines. Oh, uh, yeah, no, no complaints really. I mean, uh, I think I get up in the mornings excited about my day, whether we stay home or not. And I go to bed at night, excited. So, um, you know, when I was back in the States, uh, my daughter's there, but I'm by myself, and my other kids are everywhere, and they come over when they come over, you know, whenever that is. Mm -hmm. Other than that, we have birthdays or soccer games or recitals and attend those. So it's great to be with the family, but on a day to day, we're pretty much, you know, pretty much alone. Mm -hmm. Uh, living your own life, so now I am not alone anymore. So it's more fulfilling living here in the Philippines, and life is a little bit um, simpler and in general just very, very simpler, good. more affordable. More affordable. Yeah. Uh, the pace, even though it seems like it's really fast, it's kind of slow because, uh, you know, it's, well, I don't have anywhere to be now, I don't have to go to work, and I don't have to. Right. So. Got to make, get myself over to the gym, you know, come back and uh, figure out what to do with the day. That's it. Life is easy, simple. Good life. Yeah. That's Working fantastic. Yeah. No regrets, man. No regrets. No regrets. So, um, 
Fantastic meeting Carlos and Lynn and um, getting to know their story a little bit. So just uh, thanks for meeting us here in uh, Miyako Tacos and having lunch with us and uh, um, having a good discussion and, and getting to know you guys. We really appreciate your input and um, well, I learned a lot just listening to you guys and I know other viewers will find benefits in the things you had to say and, and hopefully easing their transition into um, coming to the Philippines. So it was really um, productive and informative. So. so thank you for watching. This is Ben from Philippines Extreme signing off over from Miyako's Tacos. So feel free to hit the like button and subscribe and have a blessed day.